Hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome to IT Snippets. Now we've done all of the donkey work in order to make sure that we have everything we need to slipstream a Windows 10 image. What we're going to do is we're going to run NT Lite and we're actually going to do so. So let's get started. Go to your start bar, type NT Lite and then click on the application. If user account control kicks in like it just has for me, click yes. And NT Lite will open. Let's just go full screen for this. As you can see, I've used mine plenty of times before. But what we want to do is we want to click add and we want to click an image directory. And then we want to point that to our slipstream folder that we created in the previous step. So this is basically the contents of your extracted Windows ISO that you created with the Media Creation Toolkit. So click on Select Folder. And as you see, it gives me a list of all of the operating systems that are on this disk. In my case, it's Windows 10 Pro that I'm wanting. So I double click that. And it'll say, do you wish to convert the image to a standard WIM format? And the current image will be replaced after conversion, back up manually before this operation. So that's also one of the reasons I had you extract it to a folder called Slipstream in the previous tutorial. So click yes, or click OK rather, and this will take a moment. The speed of this depends entirely on the speed of your machine. Okay, that's comp sets complete. I'm not really interested in showing me that in the future, it's just another thing to slow me down, so I'm just going to click do not show in the future and click OK. Now it's going to do the next step, which I believe is to extract it. Okay, so finally that's completed its process. Let's just see how long that took. It took around 13 minutes. Again, that'll depend on the speed of your system and the speed of the drive you're writing to. So, inside remove, you can actually remove some components in here. I, I generally don't touch this because this is where I've seen things broken with Windows installs. So I would try and get my image working correctly the way that I want it to with all the drivers and everything in it. And then I would maybe choose to come in here and like take out some of the apps and stuff like that. Inside features again, same issue. You can remove things, you can add things, you can delete things. I generally just leave it as it is. However, for example, if you know you were going to set this up on a machine that needed Hyper-V, you can turn on Hyper-V. Or if you needed IIS hosting, you can do that. What you choose to add here or not is entirely up to you. But everything in here can be added using the add roles icon under the control panel. Settings again, you can change what you want in here. Interesting that it says privacy because like there's no privacy with Windows 10. You can change how your start menu looks, most of as apt. I, I'm not going to sit and go through these just now, that's maybe for another tutorial. The real ones that we're wanting to look at are actually all the way down here. Updates. Okay. So in order to slipstream your updates, we click add. And we click directory containing packages. And we then go to our, well, it's actually an older version of Windows Hotfix downloader that I had. So if we go to our downloads folder and our Windows Hotfix folder, then updates, Windows 10, 64, general, and just select that and it should add all those four folders. Now, some of these are possibly already integrated into the version of Windows I actually have. The, the image that we downloaded earlier on. So if that's the case, it should come up with some errors and conflicts. There we go, there's a couple of them. It's not actually that bad. It's not something that we really need to worry about, to be honest. So we just click OK when that comes up. And that's pretty much all 
of those. Now, what we can also do if we wanted to is we can add latest online updates as well, which is built in. And it gives us an Intel microcode update. I'm not quite sure what that one does. And an Adobe Flash update. I don't actually want to install these just now, but again, you could just place a tick next to them and click download. It does say .NET Framework 3.5 cumulative update. I'm not sure why that's missing. And a servicing stack update. So I'm quite happy to click download on these. And download's now a premium feature. So we'll click OK and we can just click in queue. That just means we'll get an extra pop-up later on. Although it's now telling me, ironically, that they're already there. So I think we can ignore them safely. But if you didn't use Windows Hotfix Downloader, that's how you would actually install updates separately. So let's go to drivers. And if you remember, it's the same process. Remember, we stored them on our D drive and our folder called new drivers. So just do that again. Click add, click directory containing drivers, select new drivers, click select folder. Again, there might be some runoff, so we might get a duplicate and a duplicate might cause an error. There's only one of them. It thinks it's the wrong architecture, which is interesting. So we'll click OK. It seems to think that there's missing drivers here. I'm not quite sure what these are, to be honest. But um, I'm not worried about them just now. Again, that's something we can pick up at a later date if we need to. Generally, the first time you do one of these, there's always going to be something that doesn't quite work correctly and you have to tweak afterwards. That's unfortunately the nature of the beast with Windows and the amount of various configurations that you end up having to support. So with that done, we can go to registry. That's where you could load registry changes. I'm not doing anything at the moment. We can go to unattended. Now, you can enable this and you can skip the out of box setup, which stops the, you know, hello Windows and do you wish to set up your username and stuff like that. And just takes you to, the, the, you know, through the absolute basics. I'm not going to do this in this one. Again, that's for a future update. I've also seen that go spectacularly wrong before. So I'll leave that for now. Uh, post setup. I've never actually had to use, to be honest. So you can run commands or templates. So I, I suppose in theory, you could run a command which would install your applications at this point. We'll leave that for now. Again, I'll investigate that in a future tutorial and we'll click on the apply. For the apply, you've got the choice of saving images, save images and trim editions and stop before saving image. Well, I'm going to save image and trim editions. That means that it'll only be suitable for Windows 10 64-bit, okay? If you come down here, it says remove non-essential editions. I usually agree with that. I tend to prefer a smaller image more than anything else. You can do a standard image, a WIMP, which is editable. You can do a highly compressed ESD, which would have to be split or a spanned image. Generally, I use it as standard. I've never tried an ESD. Again, maybe want to test in a future tutorial. This shows us everything that we've requested to actually do. Notice that some things aren't, that we didn't do or aren't ticked and it's going to try them but we've not done anything this will be because I was ticking down the sides to tell you things and I do want to create the ISO so it asked me where to save the ISO as you can see I done one in August but we'll call this September or we can call it 2H20 set okay it asks me for a label so I can do 2H20 set as well and click OK and it will now create the ISO when it's finished. And it gives me a list of the pending tasks. So with that in mind, the easiest thing to do now would be to actually click the process button. Actually start the image creating. Now, this pops up every time. I've not found a way to disable this so that it doesn't bug me every time. And I don't know how much slower it is with this running. I may have to actually uninstall Windows Security on a machine and test it. But for now, I'm okay with it being that little bit slower. So I'll just click close on that. And now we wait. Okay, so it's popped up an error telling me that it couldn't install one of the updates. Again, sometimes that's expected. It's entirely possible this is already installed. Considering we're doing H220 and that's 1909, that seems like a, an intelligent thing to actually do. That, that seems like a good idea of what's actually went wrong, so we'll just click OK. It's now integrating the drivers. 
this part doesn't usually take too long. Okay, it's now moved on and it started to save changes to the image. Now it's creating the log and setting all the presets in the source. And now it's creating the ISO. I should get a pop up that's done saying that it's finished. Which I've not, but it does say complete down in the bottom corner. So let's go to DVM's ISOs Windows 10 and see if it's there. And there we have it. The entire image is 6.5 gig. So to compare the difference, August's, which was only last month, compared to the September one, is 4.5 gig. So it's actually 2 gig bigger than the previous version of Windows. So there we go. We can now close out of this because we now have our Windows 10 image. But we've got to get it tested. So let's do that in the next video. If you liked this video, give it a like. If you disliked this video, give it a dislike too. If you get feedback in this or any other videos or suggestions for videos you believe we should do in the future, then please let us know in the comments below. And most of all, thank you for watching.